Hi there, we're going to take a look at how to create a dot density map. Uh, this is using census data uh, that by race so we can uh, map out the racial segregation across the city of New Orleans in this case. I'm going to start by using the quick map services plugin to bring in a nice base map. Uh, Stamen has a toner light map. The next thing we need to do is get the data. I'm going to use a website called Census Reporter which makes it pretty easy to get uh, spatial data out of uh, from the most recent census. So I'm going to start by searching for a place. Search for New Orleans. Some people say New Orleans. Some people say New Orleans. It's just like QGIS and QGIS. All right, so there it is. Uh, next, we're going to search. I'm just going to type a topic like race, and I'm going to pick the main race table. Um, there's all sorts of complexities in the census tables, but we're going to go with this one. This is all self-reported data, so this is however people reported themselves on their census forms. Um, so we, rather than getting totals for all of New Orleans, we want to separate it down to a pretty small group. Uh, let's go down as, to block groups. And now we can see block group 0, block group 1, etc. Um, and we're going to download this data. We'll just do it as a shape file. And I'm going to save this to a new dot map folder. So the first thing I want to do is unzip this data. And so what I'll do is just use 7-zip, say extract here. And this opens up a folder. And one thing I can see is that I have four components of a shapefile, but there's also this metadata. And that metadata is going to be really handy in just a moment, as you'll see. So what I'm going to do is just drag the SHP over onto my map. And if all goes well, I see this. Um, one side effect of downloading this the way I did from the census reporter is that not only was I downloading the block groups, but I was also downloading all of New Orleans as a whole. I probably should have removed that first. Uh, but we can easily get around that just by going into edit mode and open up the attribute table. And if I just sort by name, here's a, the main one for New Orleans. So I'm just going to select that and delete it and save my edits. All right, so now I have this great data. And you'll notice that each column just has this uh, rather long string, a unique identifier, which we need to look up. So that's where this metadata.json file. Um, I'm going to open up in Vim. You could also open up with uh, Notepad or something like that. Um, it looks like this. It's just text. And what we can see is that this first column name right here means total. This next one ends with a two, it's white alone. The next one ends with three, is black, etc., etc. So the first thing I'll want to do to make this data a little more usable is to convert those column names. Now you cannot edit the column names directly, but there is a tool in the processing toolbar or processing toolbox called refactor fields. And I'm just going to open that up. And here I have a list of all these things. Um, so here's the one that was the total. I'm just going to change the name of that to total. I'm going to change the name of this one to white, change this one to black. Uh, what was the fourth one? The fourth one is American Indian Native, Alaska Native. And I'm just going to keep these short because it is a shape file. And this one was Asian, I believe. And I'm just going to stop there. Um, and what I will do is actually we'll just remove these other fields just so I'm not cluttering up my um, table. You can keep or delete whichever ones you want. I'm going to remove those. I'm also just going to, for now, uh, get rid of these margins of error, which are important if you're doing analysis. But for our purposes, I'm just going to take the numbers as provided. Otherwise, everything looks good. The GOD is a text string. Um, I'm not doing any joining, but that's usually the way you want that. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to click on Run. And I'm just saving this to a temporary layer, which is perfectly fine for now. And I can save the results later. All right, so that ran pretty quickly. I'll close that up. And when I look at my refactored table, I now have these human readable uh, column names. So that's going to make it a lot easier to choose which column I'm uh, displaying on the map. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up the styling doc, or the styling panel. Uh, it's this colorful paintbrush. And I usually like to expand this out so I can see it a little bit better. And right now it's using a single symbol, this purple polygon color. I'm going to change this. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave it at that. So simple fill is one thing. Um, I'm going to use something in here called random marker fill. 
So what this does is it takes each polygon and it puts in uh, some random markers. Now at this point I cannot see the boundaries of these polygons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new display called Simple Fill. I'm going to put this one on the bottom if I can. I'll drag this one up. Oh, I have to use the arrows. There we go. And so now I'm going to make the fill style no brush. Um, and I have these black lines and maybe I can make those nice and thick. So what it's doing here, if I go back to random marker fill, is it's adding 10 random points within each polygon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, maybe I miscounted, but somewhere around 10. It should be 10. Um, rather than having the same number in each of these polygons, I'm going to use this tool that's called Data Defined Override. So we can decide how many points to put in based on some data that's in our table. So if I just want to show the population density of um, each of these, I can open up the expression editor here and choose, let's just choose the total number. And here's this expression, I get a preview for the first block, I could just make sure those numbers seem reasonable. And now we can see, well, you can see that some of these are, are lower density, obviously a uh, lower number in the park here. Um, taking the full number uh, might not be what we want. Maybe what we do is do a dot for every 10 people. So I'm going to edit that and say, let's divide that by 10. So now I can see there's a lot of people crowded into these areas and less in some of these regions. Um, so to edit that again, I went into, I, I just regular click that and said edit, and I could, I could change that to whatever I need. Um, I'm going to actually, instead of doing the total number, let's do the number of white residents. Um, so we saw a lot of points disappear from this area. Um, now this says point count 10 here, but um, whenever you see this highlighted in yellow, that means that um, it's actually being overridden by um, some data. There's also the seed, which we'll talk about in just a moment. One thing I would like to do with this, um, let's use blue for the white population. And sometimes the uh, borders on the dots uh, can be distracting. So I'm gonna just copy that blue color, just drag it down, and it's also the stroke color. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to copy this and now uh, apply the same thing maybe with a different color for the black and African American population. So what I'm going to do is select my red and marker fill and there's a button here that will duplicate that layer. And this one I'm going to modify. So I need to go into this expression and um, this is why I gave them human readable names. They're easy to remember. So we did white and now we're going to do black and let's pick a different color so instead of blue um, let's pick maybe a kind of medium green and I'm also going to copy that over to the stroke color and there we have that. One thing you may notice is that in these areas there's almost no blue dots and the reason is because we are using the same random number seed for both of these so the, all the green dots are starting in the exact same place as all the blue dots did so we want to change this it doesn't you can just change it by one digit and that's enough um, and here we see more of a more of a mix in these areas. Um, it doesn't really matter what the seeds are; just pick different numbers for each for each layer. And let's do that again one more time. Let's do um, let's do the Asian population. So I'm going to go to my expression for the data different override, and instead of black, we'll do Asian. Let's have red, green, and blue very distinctly different colors. So here I can see um, there's actually this area in uh, the Northeast area, which I think is a large Vietnamese population. So one thing you'll notice is that when I zoom in and out, um, zooming in, you know, the, these dots are fairly readable. You can see the mix of the colors. If I go in too far, then suddenly they're so spread out, it's get hard to get a better sense of the, the density. And also as I zoom out, the dots are clobbering each other and you can't see all the dots underneath there. Um, there's probably different ways of dealing with this, but one thing that I found is really useful, especially if you want an interactive map where you're zooming in and out um, and you want the point size to not be an issue, is we instead of having the, each point be two millimeters, is how I have it set here, we can change this to be relative to the map, uh, let's say meters at scale, and let's make them six meters wide. So I've only done this with the red points so far, and I think there were some over here. So here are some. So as I zoom in, that's six meters across. Um, whereas the other s points are resizing. Uh, let me go to simple marker here and change the size of this one, make it six 
meters. And this last one, make it six meters. Now those are too small. Um, actually, at this scale of six meters per dot per person, um, that's much more space than a human would take up. Um, and we're squeezing 10 people per dot. So let's actually change that. I'm going to go to random marker fill and change our formula for each of these. So instead of dividing it by 10, I'm just going to use the raw number. And change the formula. And this last one. So now I'm doing one dot per person for each of these categories, um, which has the effect of when you're zoomed out, you can, and let me get rid of those really thick lines. Um, that's a little too thick, so like 0.5. So now we can still see those borders. Um, we could also just take that away entirely um, if we wanted to and say no pen. And then you can just see this base map. Um, and the reason I picked this particular base map, the stamen toner light, is that it's, it's grayscale. Um, it's fairly muted. Um, and you see some of the main roads, but, but not much else. So here I can see a little bit of the red um, of the Asian population and also over here. So zoomed out, it looks, you can really see the segregation. Um, these are kind of white areas. These are kind of black and African American areas. And this is sort of a mix of all three as well. Um, so you could add other colors for the other categories. These were the uh, largest population numbers, so I thought that would be useful to show those. It does get more difficult to add in more um, more dots of other types because you start running out of colors to use that don't interfere with the others. So that is a quick introduction to how to make a dot density map. Um, there used to be a plugin for QGIS that still exists called Dot Map, um, which would actually create a layer of points for you, but you don't need to because there is this random marker fill which just does it on the fly. And I think there may be some issues. When we zoom in, I notice that the density of this gets greater. Um, so I think something strange is happening with the clipping of these polygons of the, the block groups. Um, but it does seem to work well um, when you're zoomed out. So do be aware of that. There might be some issues with, with polygons that are on the edge. Um, but if you're zoomed to the level where you can see your full, uh, full map, maybe that's good. And I nearly forgot, the other very important thing here would be to save our data. Um, as we remember, we, we refactored it, and there's this icon, looks like a computer chip, almost looks like a little insect. Uh, that means it's a temporary layer, temporary scratch layer. So what I'm going to do is right click that and say make permanent. And there I have a dialog to specify where I want to save this. I'm going to save it as a geo package, a nice modern data format, and I will just call this um, New Orleans races, and um, just click OK. So that's now saved in there, and then of course I probably want to also save my project, which has the map styles. There we go.